could the Sony A9 Mark III replace my Canon R6? What's up guys, Dan from Lani here and welcome back to your new video. Today I'm gonna talk about some camera. What camera? Well, let me start from the beginning. As you probably already know, if this is the first time you watch one of my videos, you probably don't know, I'm continuing my quest to find a replacement for my Canon R6, my beloved Canon R6. But if I love it so much, why would I replace it? Quite a few reasons. Number one, I need a camera that gives me some good quality super slow motion, 120 frames per second, and the Canon R6 does it in 1080, and it's not a very good quality. More often than not, when I shoot 120 frames per second with my Canon R6, even when everything is exposed correctly, I end up with grainy footage, like digital noise, and that's not acceptable. Second, I need a camera that allows me to film for a long time without overheating. And my Canon R6, especially in the summer, for what concerns overheating, it's a kind of a nightmare. And it overheated again. I didn't realize that right away. It took some time because I have to admit, most of the times it's not a problem because I shoot with different cameras when I'm on set, on set, when I work like for an event or something like that. I use multiple cameras, so I shoot sometimes with the Canon R6 for a while, then I use the R7, then I have the 90D, so the Canon R6 doesn't have enough time to overheat, or at least not often. But what if I need to use, or if I want to use only one camera, the Canon R6 would not be reliable for that. Not at all. So let's say, besides these things, things that I do not want, like uh, 120 frames per second, bad quality, and the overheating issue, what else do I want from a camera for me to make me decide to replace my Canon R6? Okay, first of all, it has to be a full frame camera. Sure, Canon R6 is a full frame, full frame, full, full frame. IBIS, in-body stabilization. If you know my channel, if you watch some of my videos, you should already know that in-body stabilization is not something crucial for me. If I really need something to be stable without any shaking, like completely smooth, I just use a gimbal. then what else? I should be able to shoot at any frames per second without any crop. So in 24, 30, 60, 120 frames per second without crop, that's what I'm looking for. And it has to have a log profile. All right, so let's see. I found a new camera by Sony. It's the A9 Mark III. And for what I've seen, it's pretty awesome. And it checks all the boxes cause First of all, it's a full frame. Second, can shoot 120 frames per second in 4K. And of course, also 60 frames per second in 4K, which is like 6K oversampled, which is awesome. I'm not sure about the overheating, because even though it shouldn't overheat, it's a brand new camera. It just came out a few days ago, or a week ago, 10 days ago or something. We will see, we will see if there will be any complaints about anything, especially overheating issues. It has IBIS in body stabilization, even though it's not the decision making feature for me, not at all, it's nice to have it anyway. Of course, it does have a log profile, which allows us to color grade the footage the way we want. Plus, we have a special profile that's called Cinetone or something like that, where the footage, when we film, comes out of the camera right away, looking cinematic, like, already color graded. That's not something for me. <laughs> I like doing it on my own, but maybe that's something I would appreciate. 
there is something more that this camera has and it's something pretty awesome first of all it can shoot something like 120 frames per second like in photos imagine you do this one second and bang you have 120 photos and something that's just amazing as that it has a global shutter what does it mean well you know digital cameras normally have a rolling shutter that means when taking photos or videos the sensor goes like scanning the image while we're shooting from up to down activating the pixels from up to the bottom so that when we move the camera fast or when an object or subject or whatever is in frame moves fast with a rolling shutter, it looks distorted. And this one happened with a global shutter because all the pixels are activated at once at every frame. So goodbye distortion and warping and wobbles, all these kind of things that ruin our footage. But I've seen its price and it's like $6,000 in the US, but I'm living in Europe right now. And here its price is 6,199 euros. That's a lot. So am I gonna buy this camera? I don't think so, cause its price is just too much. It's good that it has 120 frames per second in 4K. It's good that it has a lot profile and I'm sure great quality, stabilization and everything. But I think the main reason why its price is so not affordable, not for everyone, is because of the new features, like the super fast ability to shoot photos that I don't actually need. When I shoot at an event, for example, it's bad enough when I have so many photos to select and then edit and color grade and everything. Imagine if for every photo I want, every idea I had to frame the subjects and everything, I had 120 photos looking almost the same or the same to choose from. I mean, I don't really want to end up with thousands and thousands of raw photos that would take me days just to select the ones I need, the amount of photos I really need for my work so okay what about the global shutter yeah that's awesome that's a great thing I'm sure I wouldn't have to worry about the warping and wobbles or distortions and okay that's maybe something I will want later on but for now I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference both in my works and my YouTube channel so it's a new thing it's maybe a game changer yes for technology advancement but right now, that's not something I need. Ibis stabilization, as I already said, it's great. With this new Sony A9 Mark III, it gives us up to eight stops of stabilization. Yeah, it's great, but as I said, that's not something I really need. And if I need it, I just use a gimbal. For my YouTube videos, 99% of the times I, I don't need that, definitely not. So it's not just about the price, it's just that that price is justified by Sony because of the new things, because of these things, because of the global shutter, because of the hundreds of photos in a second, and because of the super stabilization, super IBIS, which are great features, yes but they're not crucial for me because I'm sure if it wasn't for these features the price of the new Sony A9 Mark III would be much cheaper so let's see if I will find another camera the price of which would not be too expensive just because of some features that I don't actually need by the way, don't forget to check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things and the link to Epidemic Sound where you can find awesome music and great sound effects and get one month for free. To wrap it up, could the Sony A9 Mark III substitute replace my Canon R6? It could, because he checks all the boxes for sure, but number one, its price is too expensive because of the new features that I'm not sure I'm gonna need. And number two, so far, I don't even know if it overheats. All right, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me close the video like I used to when I had a bodybuilding channel. And remember, I'll be back.